let's all face it, whether it's because we ran out of ammo or prefer a more personal approach to inflicting violence on others, nothing quite beats a solid melee weapon. But when it comes to deciding which one is right for you, it can often be hard to decide. Thankfully, you have me as your guide. How Yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is the Streets of Rogue Guide to Melee Weapons. Starting with one of the most basic melee weapons in the entire game, the baseball bat is a starting item for the bouncer, jock, and mobster characters, and can most easily be obtained via looting the gang members after you or the rival gang kills them. However, realistically, they can be found on just about any armed NPC that isn't a cop in the slums. As for the stats of this weapon, it'll do 8 to 16 damage depending on your melee attribute. Please keep in mind that these damage ranges I will be providing in this video will not be considering items or traits that can alter your damage potential. Due to the baseball bat being one of the most commonly dropped melee weapons in the entire game by NPCs, you will realistically be selling this weapon to the Selomatic several times on your typical playthrough, especially when you realize that there are two other melee weapons that not only have identical damage output, but also have alternative utilities outside of combat. These alternatives are the crowbar and the wrench. Aside from beating people to death, the crowbar only has one practical use in the entire game, opening doors and crates. And while this can be done in most instances by simply punching it repeatedly, this tends to make a lot of noise, meaning if you intend to try to open these crates or doors without alerting everyone in a mile radius of you, you're going to want to use a crowbar to do so more quietly. This means in practice, the crowbar is effectively just a baseball bat that can sacrifice its own durability to temporarily act as a lockpick. This makes the crowbar most useful in two scenarios. The first is for stealth-based characters who ran out of lockpicks but still have their melee weapon on hand, and the second is for players who ran out of explosives and need a way to get past a locked steel door and can't find a key. However, if utility is what you want, no melee weapon comes close to the wrench. The wrench is noteworthy not only because it's the only melee weapon in the entire game that none of the characters start with unless you make a custom, but also because it can be used to tamper with various devices on the floors. The most useful and notable examples of this are on generators, which you can set to blow on a 10 second timer, as well as the police boxes, which will allow you to make sure that you don't have to deal with super cops spawning out of them if you can tamper with them correctly. Please keep in mind, however, that this does reduce the wrench's durability, so don't go thinking that just because you have a wrench in your inventory that you can just do this forever. Unless, of course, you get rather lucky dumpster diving, because the wrench can be found in trash cans with a little luck. But what if you don't care about utility whatsoever and hate weapon durability with a violent passion? Well then, you're gonna love this next weapon on the list. Your fists are unique in many ways, having a base damage of 5 to 10 if we ignore items and traits. This weapon requires no inventory space and is accessible to all characters and NPCs so long as they draw breath. Hell, even undead can use this thing, so even that standard is overselling the requirements to use these. In my opinion, the best way to use your fist is for when you don't actually need to worry about the damage numbers in the first place, such as when you're trying to break down wooden doors or are fighting NPCs that are just a hit away from death. This is because that your fists have no durability whatsoever, meaning you can just run the ones with people indefinitely. Interestingly, your fists have a different attack animation from your other melee weapons, making it harder to accidentally hit allies, but also making it harder to hit multiple foes at once, since you are no longer swinging your enemies in a cone in front of you, but rather just sucker punching them in a stab-like animation. This unique feature of the fists is lost whenever you start using supernatural means to augment your melee potential, such as when you're playing as a werewolf in Transform, or if you pick the zombie character during character select. However, if you still want to play the zombie but also want access to this unique stabbing animation, there is another weapon in the game that the fists share this unique animation style with. The knife is the only weapon in the game that shares the fists forward-facing attack animation that caters more towards targeting individuals rather than swinging outward to hit multiple targets. This makes the knife the best melee weapon for those of you who are concerned about friendly fire whatsoever, which is probably why this is a starting weapon for the Creeps and Blods. And if you didn't pick the Creeps or Blods in character select, don't worry, you'll probably find a few of these knives inevitably as you progress through the floors because it's such a common drop that even NPCs that weren't using them when they were fighting with you have a chance to drop this thing. This means for custom characters, I honestly advise against picking the knife regardless of circumstances because you're probably gonna find a few of these things no matter what. 
In terms of damage, the knife does 8 to 16 damage, again, depending on what your melee attribute is, if we ignore all other traits and starting items you may or may not have. Meaning stabbing someone with a knife does equal damage to beating them with a police baton, something that you will, much like the knife, probably have way too many of as you go through the floors because police batons get dropped by police officers with alarming regularity. I mean, come on people, I thought this game took place in America, where are the guns? The police baton is similar to the knife in the sense that you'll find so many of these things as you progress through the floors, you might just start selling them to the cellomatic even if you're a melee-oriented character because you know you're gonna find more before you need to use it again. This means realistically you're gonna be picking up police batons off the floor more to prevent NPCs from using them against you rather than because you actually need them yourself. Because of this, I only really recommend using police batons whatsoever as a way to conserve durability on your more valuable melee weapons. Because while it is technically possible for the police batons to break from overuse, I have yet to experience this myself. This is because, for those not in a know, when you pick up a melee weapon in Streets of Rogue, the durability is restored based on how much durability was left on the weapon you picked up. This means it's impossible to fill your inventory up with a single melee weapon since they'll effectively just stack and end up resulting in a weapon being in pristine condition, rather than having several weapons of varying degrees of quality and durability left on them. With that said, I believe it's high time we finally talked about the melee weapons you actually want to be using whenever you decide to pick a melee-oriented character in Streets of Rogue. Next up, we have the Axe and the Sword. The Axe is a starting weapon for the Slave Master and Cannibal characters and can most reliably be found on the NPC equivalents, whilst the Sword is a starting item for the Assassin and can only occasionally be found on the hands of Slave Masters. These two weapons are tied for second place in terms of raw damage, dealing 11 to 22 damage with a single swing depending on your melee attribute, again if we ignore items and traits that augment your melee damage. The axe is arguably better than the sword, both due to its greater ease of acquisition as well as its higher intimidation value in the game's code, which means NPCs are more likely to run away in fear from you if you're using an axe instead of a sword, despite the fact that both of these melee weapons are equally lethal to them. I'd also like to argue that the sword is inferior to the axe due to the simple fact that durability management means that the sword is going to break much more frequently and easily compared to it. This is because there's only two ways to restore durability on your melee weapons whatsoever. The first is you use a melee durability spray, which is a consumable item that you're not guaranteed to get on any typical run, usually. The second, far more likely method you'll be deploying to restore durability on your weapons is to pick up existing instances of the same weapon off the ground. However, unlike the axe, there is no guaranteed instance of a sword spawning on a typical run. This means that unless NPCs running away in fear of you is a serious con to you whatsoever, the axe is ultimately the superior melee choice in this game for you. However, if you don't really care about any of that and the only stat you give a shit about whatsoever is having the highest damage numbers possible, then this last weapon is for you. The Sledgehammer is unquestionably the best melee weapon in the entire game, and is a starting weapon for the robot character and a potential drop from Slave Masters and Bouncers in the later floors. The Sledgehammer boasts the best DPS of any melee weapon in the entire game, dealing 15 to 30 damage depending on your starting attributes. The Sledgehammer also holds the unique property of being the only melee weapon that can consistently destroy certain types of walls, even if you don't have the Wall Walloper trait. Heck, even if you have no investment in a melee attribute whatsoever, this weapon can still easily destroy barbed wire fences with ease. However, for those of you who have decided to go with melee-based characters, or have put any significant investment into the melee attribute, you'll also be able to destroy lesser forms of walls like wooden ones, hedges, or realistically anything in the game that isn't made of stone or metal for the most part. This means, realistically, any melee-oriented character will effectively have no reason to keep on the window cutters whatsoever once they acquire this melee weapon, since, let's be honest here, why would you go the stealthy approach when you can't just go unga bunga? In fact, this weapon is so good at being used outside of combat that you might want to avoid using it in combat altogether just to preserve its durability for longer if you intend to be using it to smash windows and other obstacles that get in your way. And even if you're playing a character that can't actually use melee weapons whatsoever like the Doctor or Alien, I strongly recommend picking this weapon up whenever you find it anyway, just to ensure that the enemy NPCs on the floor won't be able to use it against you, since if you picked it up, the NPCs can't. Still, regardless if you're playing a melee character or something more hybrid, or even someone that doesn't use melee weapons altogether, at least now you know a little more about Streets of Rogue. I've been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been the Streets of Rogue Melee Weapon Guide. Thank you for watching.